And Steve Kinane, our Europe Bureau Chief, is outside Buckingham Palace. Steve, can you tell us what the scene is like there? I can, Lisa. Now, normally I'd be right outside Buckingham Palace talking to you via a camera, but there are so many people in the media and people taking photos that it's completely jammed everybody's communication system. So I've had to walk up the mall, and I can just see a flood of people walking towards Buckingham Palace. When we were down there before, you could see the mood was very solemn, it was very hushed, it was very respectful, because this Queen meant a lot, of, a lot to a lot of people in this country. Uh, 70 years um, reigning over this country and, and, of course, Australia and other Commonwealth member nations as well. And where I'm looking down the mall just a few months ago was, of course, that great jubilee um, celebration of her 70 years where she cheekily played a role with Paddington Bear in that film and we saw, you know, likes of Diana Ross, you know, celebrating her 70 years. And it's hard to believe... Um, that she's gone downhill so quickly. It was only two days ago that she was appointing Liz Truss as the 15th Prime Minister who served under her, the 15th British Prime Minister. Of course, her first Prime Minister was Winston Churchill, which really gives you a sense of the length and scope of her reign. But that was just two days ago, and, of course, he was not able to attend that uh, Privy Council meeting uh, yesterday, and... That was unusual because we thought she was going to be doing that via Zoom. And then we got to her today. She had a medical condition that doctors were looking into. And, of course, the palace does not normally announce that kind of thing. So we knew that was serious and we knew it was even more serious when we saw that her four children were going up to Balmoral. And Steve, when you say that uh, the the mall, you've you've had to walk up the mall. I've been there for those jubilee celebrations in the past as well. It's um, it's quite a scene when people pack in there. But this is, as Michael was just saying, a celebration of an incredible life. Do you think that uh, that will be a sense that we start feeling from people as well? That there's the initial shock, the initial grief, uh, but then. Uh, a real keenness to ensure that she is commemorated and marked this 70 years of service that she has given to not only to the UK but to the Commonwealth as well. I think that really will be celebrated, Lisa, and that, that word service, I think, is key. And if, even before uh, she became Queen, back in 1947, she gave a very famous speech on her 21st birthday in South Africa about how her life be dedicated to service and to serving the Commonwealth and everybody recognises that and she was doing it right up until the end. I think it's, you know, I, I was reading a, a book on the Queen a, a while back and I, I remember both George W. Bush and John Howard both said how much she loved the job. Into her 90s, she loved the job. She really loved serving the people of the Commonwealth, not just Britain, the Commonwealth. She made trips to over 250 Commonwealth nations, to over 250 trips to Commonwealth nations um, when she was queen. She loved that travel. She loved that service. She was always inter interested in what was going on in Australia. And I, nobody could have met with more heads of state than the queen. Mm. The stories that she would know, the stories she would be able to <laughs> tell if she wasn't so discreet would be extraordinary because she saw them all from Winston Churchill onwards. She certainly knew how to keep a secret. Steve, stay in the line there. Our viewers are tuning in. Those are the gates of Balmoral Castle, uh, inside of which uh, the Queen died uh, a few hours ago.